uh, pediatric respiratory compromise is pretty much a, a really simple um, skill that we're going to do. Um, it will include just mainly basic skills. There's nothing real high tech that goes into this. Um, and basically the way that it's going to be set up is for you to identify a, a child that is worsening. Um, remember we talked about in class, anybody, especially children that's in respiratory distress, if not managed quickly, will quickly go into respiratory failure. If not managed quickly, will even quicker go into respiratory arrest, right? And we know that the most common cause of pediatric cardiac arrest is what? Hypoxia, right? So basically the way this is set up, and we're gonna have a different mannequin than the one that we've got today. But basically the way it's gonna set, be set up is that you're gonna arrive on scene to a child that is not breathing well. Who do we trust to tell us about that child? The mom, right? The parent, the caregiver, the one that knows the child the most, right? There'll be a couple things that you're going to ask, a couple things that you're going to assess. Very important with children though, is that whenever we come up on scene, do we just go up and just start, what's wrong with this baby? Do we grab that baby from the mother's arms? No. We do what? We do a visual assessment from a distance, right? Now naturally, if that child is progressively getting worse, then we are going to do what? We're gonna manage the child, right? Are we ever gonna ask the mother to leave the child's presence? No, not at all, all right? So the, the equipment that you'll need for this is going to be naturally your, your child. Um, the person holding the child, the caregiver, the person that you get your information from. You'll start out with a, uh, a non-rebreather mask because this also is going to show that you know how to do flow by oxygen, right? Delivery of flow by oxygen. You'll also need a BVM, all right? You'll need your CO2 detector and your OPAs, right? Now, you say your CO2 detector, why is that? Well, you can actually connect a CO2 detector to a BVM. Just like that, all right? Now, you can just, you can verbalize it, but make sure that you do verbalize it, all right? So, more than likely your scenario is going to be, you're called to the scene um, of an infant or child who has had a history of an upper respiratory viral infection for a couple of days. Mother has noticed that the child is getting progressively worse with his breathing, all right? So, your BSI scene safe, uh, your general impression from a distance, all right? I'm seeing the patient. How do I find the patient? Then the proctor is gonna tell you. Either the child is, is making eye contact with you or more than likely it'll be the child is staring off into the distance, pretty flaccid. Um, and we know that's bad with a child, right? Anytime a stranger comes up, that child's gonna get a little bit anxious, right? So how is the child, how do I find it? I'm going to determine the level of consciousness. How would I det determine a level of consciousness on a child, on an infant? Are we going to... Do what? Well, we could. That's a little bit farther along. But just simply looking at the child, right? I can tell if that child is alert, right? Or I can tell if that child is awake but not really aware of his surroundings, right? So I'm going to determine that. And then I'm going to assess for, uh, I'm going to assess the airway, looking and listening, right? I don't have to get right down and open up the airway and all that. If a child has uh, pretty bad respiratory distress, what are we going to probably be able to hear audibly? All right, if, 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 if they're full of, if they're full of uh, fluid, or if their airways are constricting, right? Or if their, their upper airways are swollen, we might hear strider, we might hear a snoring type respirations, we might hear gurgling, we might hear wheezing, right? Oftentimes with uh, pediatric respiratory infections, you're gonna hear wheezing, and it's oftentimes audible, all right? Um, we're gonna assess the breathing. My rate rhythm, chest excursion, and audible noises. 
All right, what's my rate? What's the normal rate for an infant breathing? Depending on age, somewhere around 40, 40, 50, right? So if I get a respiratory rate of 65, then I know that's, that's bad. If I get a respiration, respiratory rate of 15, I know that that's even worse, right? Um, I'm looking for chest rise and fall, chest excursion, right? We're trying to see if it's equal and bilateral, all right? Um, my rhythm. A child that's having difficulty breathing will often do grunting, right? <laughs> right? Um, and then also look for foreign body airway obstructions. That could be the whole reason why this child is having difficulty breathing. Not likely in this case because he's had what? A history of a respiratory infection, right? Um, then I'm going to check my SpO2. What's my SpO2? At that point, the proctor is going to say your SpO2 is 82%. It's going to click. What do I need to do? I need to get him some oxygen, right? This is supposed to be a, uh, uh, it's an armor breather. Um, so, how am I going to give him oxygen? Am I just going to take it and strap it to his head? He's not going to stand for that, is he? So, what am I going to do? Hmm? All right, so I'm going to hook my blow by up, 15 liters, right? Um, and I'm going to start, I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to administer blow by oxygen to the child just holding it just in front of his face, allowing him to get it, all right? And at that point, I'm going to say, okay, mom or dad, I need you to hold this and hold it right in front of his face. I'm going to demonstrate to them how to do blow by oxygen. So can you just hold this right in front of his face? All right. At that point, I'm going to check his pulse. How am I going to check his pulse? I'm going to check a brachial pulse. All right. What would be what would be around the normal range for a brachial pulse in an infant? 100. Probably going to be a little higher than 100. So 140, 150, somewhere around in there is the safe range, right? Um, then I'm going to evaluate perfusion. How do we evaluate perfusion across the board? Cap refill for children, that's one a very reliable indicator, so I can check cap refill on the toes, check cap refill on the uh, fingernails, making sure that when the fingernail turns white, it turns back pink quickly. If he's hypoxic, it's not going to because the cells in the fingers and toes are going to be the last areas to really receive oxygen when the child is, is, is hypoxic, all right? And then I'm going to get my baseline vitals. Now, is it always going to be easy to get a uh, blood pressure on a child? No, but we're going to at least attempt or try to get one, all right? But more importantly in this situation, we're looking at respiratory rate, SpO2. Um, we're looking at, at heart rate, things like that, all right? At that point, the proctor is going to say the child is uh, starting to develop decreasing SpO2, decreasing pulse rate, seesaw respirations, head bobbing, drowsiness, and other signs of progressing respiratory distress to failure, right? So, does this child need more than just blow by oxygen at this point? Yes. So, I'm going to take the child from the mother's arms. I'm going to place the child in a supine position. And then I'm going to pad up under the child. Why do I pat up under the child? Right, if this was a, a good mannequin, we would be able to see that, right? If, if I'm not on the child, if no padding, what's going to happen to the neck? Hyperflex, right? Which could potentially pinch it off, right? So we need to, and we may have to adjust the padding, right? We may not need it really hot, but we need it to where it's at least going to bring the head up in a neutral position, all right? Um, at that point, I'm going to have it here where I can manage the airway. I'm going to open the airway manually, and then I'm going to consider an airway adjunct. So I'm going to find my OPA, all right? I'm going to measure it. And if that's the right one, I'm going to stick it in, all right? No gag reflex is present. The patient accepts airway adjunct. Um, now uh, I'm going to do what? The respiratory rate is now 20 per minute. Is that good or bad? That's bad, right? So I'm going to come back and I'm going to get my BBM ready. I'm going to hook it up. 
to my high flow oxygen, and I'm going to begin to bag. All right, hook it up, 12 to 15 liters. Make sure that the mask is uh, tight, the seal is tight, and it says ventilations at a rate of 20 per minute with sufficient volume to cause what? What do we want to be seeing? Chest, chest. chest rise, chest rise. And then at the end, we're just going to ventilate at the proper rate. And then we're also going to say, I'm also going to monitor for changes in what? Capnometry or capnography, if I've got my CO2 hooked up. Also, important, I want to look at the mechanical signs of improvement. I want to see skin color improving. I want to see SpO2 improving. Maybe even alertness. It's not a bad thing if that baby starts kind of moving around and crying, right? Because we know that he's starting to get back to a normal baseline, all right? Then at the very end, the examiner is going to ask, how would you know if you are ventilating the patient properly? How would you know that? Okay, the mechanical signs, right? We, we're going to be looking for good chest rise and fall, right? We don't want any resistance when we're bagging. And we're going to be looking at improvements in baseline mental status. We're looking at improvements in skin color, temp, and vital signs. And then the most important thing, once we've managed this airway with this child, is going to be to do what? Transport to get them to the hospital as soon as possible, right? So, I talked a lot about this, but basically it's just we're identifying a sick child. We're going to try one route of oxygenation. That's probably not going to work because he's really sick. He's going from respiratory distress to respiratory failure very quickly. I want to try to halt that respiratory failure, right? So I'm going to identify that, put him here, and then I'm just going to manage him with a BVM, right? Oxygen and, and transport, all right? Any questions about that? All right.